even film an intro, but I am so excited. I am dropping everything. I am dropping everything. We're dropping everything right now. I was actually recording a video this week. Scratch that. We'll get back to that another time. So we're just going to ignore the way I look right now because I'm about to go on a run. But I decided now is the perfect time. Now is the perfect time because guess what I have in my hands. I'll tell you in a minute actually. I'll tell you in a minute. Hi guys. Nice to meet you if you're new here. Nice to see you if you're not new here. How's it going? I'm Lara. We're reading new releases in this video. This is not my normal intro. Normally I sit down on the floor but I am so excited. Let's open this package because I am so excited. I'm so excited. Oops. We are reading, babe. Guess what we're reading? We're reading these books in this video. New releases. This one came out a couple days ago. This one came out yesterday. We're reading these two books in this video, which is Wild Love by Elsie Silver. Elsie Silver's new book. This is one of my most anticipated reads this year. This is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. And I'm so excited for these books. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna lie, I've actually already started this book. I am almost 130 pages into this book because, like I said, this book came out yesterday. I started it yesterday morning at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. I started this book because it came out on Kindle and I was waiting for this book to come. And I got this a couple days ago for my book of the month book. I read Chestnut Springs, finished the series, love the series, six star series. I love it so much love them so much i did actually try and read her other series i didn't love the first book but we're just gonna forget about that a first book is a first book i love elsie silver so far i'm loving this book but we'll get to that later also in this video we're gonna read just for the summer by abby jimenez this is the third interconnected standalone i read yours truly last year my first abby jimenez book a five-star read one of my favorite books of last year i read part of your world a couple weeks ago while i was in my slump Oh my gosh, that book was so good. Not as good as yours, truly, but so good. And I'm so, so, I don't know another word other than excited. I'm just so ready and happy that I own these books. Since I'm currently reading Wild Love, we're gonna keep reading this book. But this is what we're doing in this video. I'm so sorry this intro was so chaotic. I was just so excited to have all these books in my possession. That's the intro, you guys. That's the intro. Nice to see you. I'm Lara. We're reading these books. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know what Wild Love is about, it actually connects to Chestnut Springs. I won't tell you how, just in case you haven't read Chestnut Springs. It's connected to Chestnut Springs. All of her series are connected in some way. In the first series, there's a person that's connected that follows in Chestnut Springs. You're not following this character in Chestnut Springs, but it introduces you to Chestnut Springs. And then Chestnut Springs introduces you to Rose Hill. I am actually going to tell you who this is about. I did just lie to you. I'm sorry. You can skip a tad bit ahead if you don't want to know, but I am going to tell you. This one is about Willa's brother, Ford. This is about her brother and her best friend's little sister. Ford's best friend has a little sister. They all grew up together around each other, but these two just always bickered. They they kind of just like went back and forth and threw these jabs at each other as they were growing up. And Rosie's been gone for a while. She lived in a different city, so they haven't seen each other in a long time. Rosie shows back up after a really long time. He hasn't seen her in quite a while. And they're still throwing these little jabs at each other. They still do it. They still pick on each other. But they're like, whoa, they're grown up. Rosie's grown up. Ford's grown up. There is a fun element into this book. I won't tell you what it's about because I didn't know what it was about, but it is on the back. It is on the back. I think it's fun to just go into these Elsie Silver's books without knowing too much because she kind of just throws these curveballs in and it's just so fun. There's a little element into this book that throws just something new into a romance book. We've seen it done before. Yes, I know, but this one's done a bit differently and... I mean, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about, but if you haven't read it, an element that's done just a bit differently, but it's so fun. And I just love any extra character that Elsie Silver writes. Love the main characters and I love all the side characters because they all have such a personality. I'm 130 pages into this book. We're gonna keep reading. I'm actually flying through it, honestly. We're reading new releases, but I'm gonna go on my run. I'm gonna go on my run and then I'll come back and we'll continue Wild Love.
am I ever just gonna look maybe a little decent? Ever? Ever? Will I ever look decent? <laughs> no. The next day, I'm currently, I don't have a bookmark in this book. Let's see, which one do we want to use? I have so many custom bookmarks. Shout out, shout out to my bestie's mom. Slay. I am currently 256 pages into this book. 257 pages into this book, chapter 27. I haven't been recording myself too much reading this book because I am so enthralled that I'm just like, oh, forget the camera, I'll record later. And then I've just read 50 pages. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna read 10 pages. I'll pick up the camera in a minute. 50 pages later, I'm like, oh, I should stop reading and pick up the camera. I literally tell y'all about books and sometimes I just cannot explain a book to you. I kind of told you what it was about, but the characters in this book are just so good. Every single character. There's not one bad character in this book, every single one. And yet again, Elsie Silver knows how to make you feel like the book you're reading is real life. I'm not reading a book. I'm not even watching a movie. I'm not even watching a movie, not reading a book. I'm watching real characters in real life. Take a trip to Canada and meet these people. That's what they all feel like to me. That's just one of my favorite things about Elsie Silver's writing. I love that about books is when something just feels so real. Like sometimes you, are, if you feel like you're reading a book, obviously. Sometimes reading isn't as fun as you wish it was. Sometimes you're just not reading a book that's really capturing you. Love the male main character, love the female main character, love the people in this book. We are gonna continue reading this book though. The goal is to maybe try and finish it today, but I'm not gonna force myself, I'm not gonna rush it. I've also been switching back and forth between this physical book and on the Kindle. I need to go through and underline some stuff in the book that I've maybe dog-eared the pages to. Maybe, just maybe. It's raining outside so oh well that's my excuse is it's raining outside it's actually been a couple of days since i finished wild love i have been reading just for the summer a little bit there's some clips here and there but on i think i finished thursday friday i did not feel good so there was really no reading i think i got 20 pages in on friday and then yesterday i was too busy to record anything but i did read a little bit but first Let's talk about Wild Love since I finished it. This was such a fun book. Such fun characters. Like I've said plenty of times, I think Elsie Silver can do no wrong when creating characters. She just does such a good job at side characters and main characters and the plot and the story and the romance and the friendships, bonding, twists and turns, and the extra elements in here. There are tropes in her books. 
a lot of her books, there are tropes in them that are tropes that most people dislike, they hate. They're not done well a lot of the time. Most people don't like them. I, for one, am a fan of these tropes but because I've read books that are there, they're just done so well. This was such a fun book and such a good start to a new series. And I'm so excited to read the rest of the series. I give this book a 4.25 stars. My other most anticipated release this year, this month, is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I have, like I said, already started this book. I didn't really know too much about this book going into it. There's a bit of a content warning when you go in. I am absolutely loving it. Let me tell you a little bit about it and then tell you why I'm loving it. This one is following Emma and Justin. Emma and Justin have this curse laid upon them. Justin has this curse where if he dates somebody within the next couple of months they break up, that person finds their soulmate, he's left alone. He dates somebody else, they break up, that person finds their soulmate. And it's just a repeat factor. He posted something and Emma was like, oh my gosh, if this is not me. Emma dates somebody, breaks up with them, they break up with her, whatever, they find their soulmate, she's left alone. And then another repeat factor. So they start talking and they're like, what if we date each other, break up, and then we'll each find our soulmates because that's how it works for both of us. Maybe we can just like break this curse once and for all. So that's what they're doing. They're not fake dating, going on dates. It's the way Justin is, he's such like an organized person. And I love that. I don't think I've ever read a book with such an organized main character. So organized, you guys. So organized. And it's such a fun added touch to the book. I absolutely love reading those scenes with the organization. On top of them doing this breakup, dating breakup thing to find their true love, there's also these extra added things that are happening in the story. It's where the, the content warning comes from, so I don't want to tell you what it's about. It does say it. it adds reality to the book. If, in a way, where you're reading this book and it feels like real life. And I know sometimes we want to escape reality. That's why we read to escape reality. It's just adding more of the reality. It's not just them dating and going on dates and then they're gonna break up. There's extra things that can be quite heavy topics, but I'm really having so much fun reading this book. This is the kind of book where you can sit down and accidentally read it all in one sitting. I think it's just one of those books where you simply just forget that you're reading. I love when a book has extra things added into it like text messages or emails or posting on something. Organization and spreadsheets. It's I love when a book has those added touches to it, and this book definitely has some added touches to it like that. Just gonna sit down and read this book, and that's what I plan on doing. And we'll see how far we can get into it. spot I should move I should but I'm comfortable <laughs> what can I say uh, now I'm about 220 pages in I'm a little over halfway I don't have anything to update you on because I can't really tell you much more about the book other than I am still liking it I love the deepness to the book it just dives a little deeper that's all that's the update <laughs>
to go investigate because I think I just figured something out. I think, I think I'm a little late. I think I'm a little late to figure this out. But I'm reading the last, I think I have about 50-ish pages left. And I just found something out. Wait, is this for real? Am I just realizing this? Because if I'm just realizing this and you've read it, did it take you that long to figure it out too? No way. There's no way. There's no way that, first off, it took me this long to figure it out. Second off, what? There's no freaking way, dude. My camera died, and I, but I wish I was recording myself because, what? Looks like we're gonna continue reading, because what? Oh my gosh, I wish I could tell you. I think it makes it so different that I just read, I just read that. Honestly, 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 <laughs> like I wonder if other people figured this out as soon as they started reading the book because context clues, well really there's no context clues, really there's none, except for just like one, but you can just skim over that, you can kind of just gaze over that. This is... I'm still shocked. I, 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 I'm gonna cry. Ugh. I finished. I finished a couple hours ago. Then I went on a run, went to the grocery store, all of that. So it's finally time to update you. I was thinking about just updating you tomorrow when it's light outside, but I kind of like the fill of my room when all my lights are on. It does glare off my glasses. So maybe I should take them off. I'm a little stuck on a rating because I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed this book. I love so much about this book. So I'm like, should I give it a five star? Should it be a five star? I really like this book. I really liked basically everything about this book, especially the ending, especially the ending, because it really got me. It really got me. I did not connect the dots. I did not. I feel like sometimes I'm just way too picky with my five star reads. Once I put them in my journal, it's final. Like even if I think maybe not, but once they go in my book journal, they're final. It's final. Because sometimes I think maybe Caraval 
was a five star read, but I gave it a 4.75, but it's in my journal as a 4.75. The point is I'm stuck between a 4.75 and a five star. And again, yes, I know, annoying. I think I might go with a five star. When I edit this video, editing Lara, we'll know what the review is. We'll know what my rating is because I've had a day to think about it because I'm editing this video tomorrow. This book was so good. I will say for it being such a highly anticipated book, I'm not disappointed at all with Just for the Summer. I feel like sometimes when you read a book that you have just been so excited for and you've hyped it up for yourself in your head or the other books in the series were amazing or it's a start of a new series and you're so excited and then you're let down and disappointed by the book because you've just hyped it up so much for yourself. I did absolutely love and enjoy this book and I think Abby Jimenez does such a good job with writing. She knows how to write a book, she knows how to write characters, she knows how to write plots and twists. The way that she writes a book is so captivating and so just smart that I'm not good enough to explain to you the way that she writes a book. Is it better than the other books is the question because the series was so good. I think this is one of my favorite romance like interconnected standalones because I just love the way that Abby Jimenez writes and I need to read more of her books because I've only read this series from her so I need to read something else. But if I keep talking about this book, I'm just gonna keep telling you how good I was. So definitely pick this book up. I also read Wild Love in this video another anticipated read that I had for this month. Still super good. Nothing will be Chestnut Springs. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. But Wild Love was also still very good. I do recommend both these books. Hope I'm not hyping them up too much for you, but they did, they did really, I did really enjoy both of these books. Two anticipated releases, two books that did not disappoint me. So thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. And I'm out of my reading slope, you guys. I have been in it for so long. I can officially say that I'm out of my reading slump. Thank you. I need to go to bed and wake up tomorrow and edit this video because this video is coming out a little later than I thought it would. So apologies for that, apologies for that. Let me know your most anticipated book of this month or this year. Other than that, I hopefully will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching.